Hey you guys, I'm Mina. I'm a commercial designer in Chicago and this is my house in Little Village slash Pilsen. This is the living room. This is our sofa. It's from CB2, but we got it on Craigslist for like around $300 and it was in pretty good condition. And then I filled it with a bunch of pillows and my partner and I don't agree on it because I want as many pillows as possible and he likes to throw them on the floor. And then these really great chairs were his grandma's and his mom redid them for us a couple of years ago. So they have this really nice stain on them. And then this is our coffee table. It's this really cool Macton stone. And then just accessorize the table with this really cool Virginia Sin uh, candle holder. And one of my favorite designers in Marrakesh, uh, Lawrence, she has these really nice kind of abstract paintings. So we got this when we were in Morocco. And then uh, my favorite thing is to use tile samples as coasters. So you see those throughout the house, but we have a lot of tile coasters around. My fiance is an audio engineer, so we always have to make sure that we have the coolest audio in the house as well. We got these really cool speakers from this Craigslist dealer actually just a couple of weeks ago. This table was actually a hand-me-down from his grandma, and it had this kind of like cherry laminate. So one of my projects um, in the past few months was redoing this. There's this really great um, plaster table that Leanne Ford did for Crate and Barrel, and I felt like I could kind of hack it and do it myself. So I actually just plastered this table. This credenza we got it at one of our favorite uh, vintage stores in Humboldt Park it's called Vintage Quest and the guys are just like really cool you can take your dog there he sometimes has parties upstairs so it's just like a cool space to be so I really like how it adds this like warmth and darkness to the space that we kind of needed to counterbalance the other woods Welcome to the dining room. This is our dining table. We love to have dinner parties around it um, and we just have like really intimate moments. We got this dining table on offer up for only like $150 and it matches our coffee table in the living room. It's like that Macton stone again. And then we got these Seska chairs on Craigslist for $60. On the table, we have this really beautiful pottery piece from DTK Ceramics. He's this really awesome ceramicist. Um, and he's done some really cool, like, big installations around the city, so he's definitely one to check out. I don't know if we were supposed to do this because we rent, but this uh, light fixture is from Ikea, and Derek is really good with wiring, so he installed it for us. This is our built-in. We keep a lot of, like, things stashed away in it, but we also can style it with our cameras and, like, all of our book collection. And then the bar was a pass-down from Derek's grandma. And it was actually in really good condition, so we haven't done anything to it, but it's just like this really nice mid-century modern piece that we didn't have to buy. This is our gallery wall in the dining room. It's made up of some estate sale finds and some finds from Morocco. Uh, this alpaca wall hanging is from an estate sale. It's like kind of funky and off the wall. And then this hat and broom I got in the Sooks of Morocco. And then this is my like favorite designer. She's based in Morocco. Um, her name is Lawrence, or that's like the company's name, but she makes these really beautiful like wall hangings and ceramics. This bench, this is like one of my most expensive purchases. It was only like $200, but I don't spend that much money on furniture. So um, this is like our fine piece. I don't like people to sit on it that much. Welcome to the bedroom. This is our bedding. We got this in Morocco. We got this blanket and this one and these two pillows. Um, and then this wall hanging we really love. We got it in San Francisco at a thrift store. And we just like really like the desert vibe that it gives to the space. This lamp we got um, from this like vintage seller on Instagram. Her name's LB Fines. And then we really love this artist. We don't know who it is, but we got it at um, Midland Vintage in Indianapolis. And you can see him like all over the house. We have uh, one here, one in the bathroom, and one in the dining room. One of the reasons we love this apartment is that it's a three bedroom so we can both have our own studios and this is my studio. Um, this is this really cool 
print that Kelly Wurstler has and I kind of added it into Photoshop and then sent it to Zazzle and they sent me a custom tapestry. This lamp is really special. I actually just painted it and it's based off of this chair that I love from Sincerely Tommy. She's like a Brooklyn based store. So I'm really proud of it and she reposted it. So I think she likes it too. And then I got this postmodern chair for only $40 on offer up. So this is another like really cool find. I love using offer up because I just find the best stuff for a good price. And then this is kind of just my wall of art supplies, which is really great because I don't have to go to the craft store all the time. Welcome to our in-house music studio. This is really Derek's space. And so he pulled together some images of artists that he really likes their studios. And then uh, we really like the Joshua Tree House and like the desert vibes. So on this wall, he has this guitar and bass hanging. This uh, mixing board he got from Craigslist. It's really 70s, so he really likes that about it. And then we have this cool giraffe lamp that we thrifted from Midland Arts and Derek rewired it. Uh, we have this like recycled denim on the wall, which I think just looks cool, but it also has like sound absorption properties. And at some point he was in architecture school, so he has some of his old drawings on the wall, which just really adds like his space. It's kind of fun because like each of our studios just like kind of defines us as people in the design. Welcome to our bathroom. Um, the, my favorite part of the bathroom is actually this like vintage wooden door and it has the like old doorknob. So this is kind of a special feature that we have in here. Uh, we didn't really do that much to the bathroom though just because we rent. So we have like the cool vintage tiles on the floor. Um, we didn't paint, it was already this color, but then we got this geometric CB2 shower curtain. And then that kind of informed the design for the rest of the space. We just added these like little amber accents, like the brown waffle towels. Uh, this is another one of those like sketch drawings from the artists that we have all over the house. This is our kitchen and since we're renters we can't really do too much but we try to do kind of like a cozy like kitchen Moroccan vibe in here. So we have just like this little seating nook. We got this lamp from Ikea but it reminds us of the lights that we saw when we were in Morocco. And then this is like our little prep island. It's just from Ikea, but since we don't have a lot of cupboard space, we use it as storage. And then I like to decorate it, which Derek thinks we need more prep space, but I want it to be really accessorized. This is a recent addition to the kitchen. Since we don't have a backsplash, I want it to still be pretty. So we just got a little dowel from Home Depot and some S hooks and added some of our cute little mugs and some herbs. And then we added these shelves above the stove just because we don't have a lot of storage in here, but we use it for all of our spices and then we have small bowls up there. And then um, I really love this teapot. It's from my uh, favorite artist in Indy. Uh, his name is Nathaniel Russell and one day he was having a yard sale I couldn't go to. So I made Derek like rush over and he came back with this teapot. So now I have like a special teapot from Nathaniel. This is our sunroom. It's my favorite room because I can use it in the morning for like a cup of coffee or I can use it at night when I have a cocktail. Um, but we have this sofa that I thrifted from Midland Vintage in Indy. The inspiration for this space was just like Moroccan gardens and just like trying to incorporate like the bright greens and like all of the plants that we saw when we were in Morocco. Um, so we made this plant stand and we just used bricks. And then this mirror is from my great grandma. I've had it since I was in high school. Here are my, my tile coasters again. They really are great and they add just like the green and white pop of color that we wanted to have out in this space. This rug I thrifted, I got it on Facebook Marketplace. I got it for $40. It really was in great condition when I got it. And so I was really excited because it's from West Elm, so it's originally like $500. I'm Oliver Pelle. I'm Jean Pelle. We are a lighting and furniture design studio in Manhattan, New York. Welcome to our studio.
this is our project room. This is where a lot of um, sketching and prototyping and experimentation happens. We do design together and we develop the projects and the ideas together. So I think that the space is actually a pretty good reflection of how we work. It's a fluid space and everything is open. We're very hands-on in every department, in every aspect of the business. Oliver and I met in architecture school, in grad school at Yale. As I went further into my architecture career, I really wanted to go back to making things and working with my hands. We worked together initially with the idea of doing an interdisciplinary design studio with architecture and interiors and products. We have the lighting base set up. Um, they're parallel to one another. There are always two workstations up front. They are not assembled in an assembly line sort of way, but they're assembled. Each person takes over a complete fixture from start to finish. All of our light fixtures are made to order. That's quite important to us that they're made in New York and that it is assembled in the same space that we designed them. I think clients really love the idea that uh, we are making them here and it's really nice to be able to bring clients in and show them this is where we make your light. Let's go this way. We are now in what we call sort of generally our, our, our tool area. We're in the middle of making the, the molds for the new Nanas. So this is actually the most fun when Absolutely. you get to chop away at foam. It is the most fun because it's like uncharted territory. Um, you can't find an instruction manual on how to do this. You just have to um, figure it out as you go. Is something that no one can give you guidance about, but that's part of the excitement. That's our exploration, and that's why we do this type of work, because it is the most fun, and that's what we're passionate about. So now we're back in the showroom. Um, it's really for us the one opportunity to show our work in an environment that we really like. I think that the showroom allows for our work to live in a proper context. And the context is the home. And um, the home is a really important idea for us because that is sort of the backdrop in which all of these pieces exist and to be able to, uh, in a way, recreate that in um, the best presentation possible is what we'd like to do here in the showroom. From the very early stages of us working together, Jean expressed a desire to make a light with a flower. And to me, that idea seemed very foreign at the time. I was a hardcore architect, no flowers. Paper at this point became quite important to us to, to recreate the the velvety texture that flower petals very often have, that then really became the foundation of all of our lore experimentation from these flowers to red poppies, then to eventually the nana. These are two prototypes essentially that was built last May for New York Design Week. And they're giant paper cotton casts of a banana frond. They're light fixtures, but they're also paintings in a way. The future of Pele is for us always depending on that people keep buying our work and that people keep enjoying what we do and that we can continue doing this. I mean, I feel like if we have a month where we hit our sales goals, we're super excited and we can invest into new work and we can invest into new things. I love to work. I've always loved art and design and for me to be able to do this as my career and to be able to do it happily with my husband is like an incredible accomplishment I feel like and I just want to be able to sustain it and to be able to keep going and to be able to continue to do that so I do feel very fortunate and I hope the future of Pele is more of that. Well, thank you very much for visiting us today in our studio and um, 
We were really excited to show you a little bit about what happens here. Thanks for visiting. Here we are, Location Lux. I'm your host, Alan Canis, and here in season one, we'll be focused on what we're calling the Great Lifestyle Migration. On each episode, I'll be right here in San Francisco, Silicon Valley. Over the last few decades, we've witnessed a great migration for employment and technology development. As such, the need and demand for homes has been among the highest in the country. These migration choices are giving people an extraordinary opportunity to explore new locations, amenities, and lifestyle options. And that's why we're here. Location Lux. And this week, I'm so pleased to welcome another one of my favorite real estate colleagues, Pollyanna Snyder, direct from Montana. Pollyanna, thank you so much for joining us today. Alan, thanks so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to speak to you. I'm here in Bozeman, Montana today, where we're having all weather patterns. It's perfect for spring skiing, and, and we have snow. It's snowing right now over the Bridger Mountains, and, and the sun's coming out to the west. So I'm in a panoramic spot right now where I can see about 100 miles in every direction. Pollyanna, today we're going to talk about how not only is Montana a destination location, but it's a beautiful lifestyle. But before we do that, I would love it if you would take a moment to talk a little bit about you and your business. Absolutely. And again, thanks for having me. I've been in Bozeman now for about 12 years. Uh, I grew up in the military. I'm originally from Kentucky and Virginia and um, met my husband and had my children in Southern California, which is where I began my real estate career in South Orange County, primarily the Laguna Beach, Dana Point, San Clemente area. Left there in 2006, and I have since practiced real estate in North Carolina, uh, Telluride, Colorado, and I moved here 12 years ago where I began my residential practice here in Bozeman. So being in Montana, you know, people want to hear interesting stories. Just tell us about the horseshoe story. Well, in fact, I happened to bring it with me, and I'm going to show it to you in just a second. So Bozeman is, a, is an old Western town, you know, really de began to develop after the Civil War. And uh, last summer, outside of our office, we had two, we, we work on a corner down here, and one of the original and older streets in Bozeman, and they dug it up. They were replacing water and sewer pipes. And we had these enormous 20 to 25 foot trenches out in front of our office. And one day I'm walking up to the front door and sitting on the sidewalk is this horseshoe. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's fascinating. You can just look at it and see the age and the curve of it. And I brought it inside our office and I set it down on our conference room table. Well, one of our colleagues is an avid horseman, rancher, fly fisherman, you know, Chip's fabulous. He's your quintessential six foot three, 10 gallon hat advisor at our office. And he walks in and he sees his horseshoe sitting on the conference room table. And immediately he said, number one, he said, that is a hand forged horseshoe. He said, I'm gonna tell you right now, that horseshoe's probably from around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And he said also that comes from a very large horse. So maybe some sort of a draft horse uh, Clydesdale or Percheron coming up and down the street, you know, hauling crates and freight up and down the town of Bozeman when it was, it was just dirt roads. And I understand that you have another great piece of history. You have Mr. Gary Cooper. Absolutely. Most people don't realize <laughs> that Gary Cooper was from Montana. We do commemorate Mr. Cooper. There is a, we have a lovely theater downtown called the Ellen Theater, and there is a star on the sidewalk for Gary Cooper downtown. Oh, that's great. So let's start talking about real estate. Great. How many times have people come up to you and give or given you a call regarding purchasing the John Dutton Ranch? <laughs> well, <laughs> once a week, maybe. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, with the advent when the when the show when Kevin Costner brought uh, the show Yellowstone uh, to television, it was an enormous hit, and um, you know I call it the Dallas. Uh, of our of the 80s you know Yellowstone is our Dallas what would Dallas was back in the 80s and uh, we frequently get that request um, in fact we own five offices here in the area and we have very five distinctive areas just within driving distance around us we have Bozeman we have Big Sky just about 50 miles to the south and we have Livingston just about 35 miles to the east. Now, that is where the story of Yellowstone takes place, is down in the Paradise Valley. So in particular, when that show debuts in July, our website hits go up about 40% uh, wow. with folks looking at the Bozeman and you know Livingston, Paradise Valley area. But that is the question that we receive a lot is, you know, where's the John Dutton Ranch and, and how can I buy that? So where are people coming from? Where are they migrating from? Now, prior to COVID, we had a lot of folks coming from California and Colorado. Okay. Since COVID hit, that has really expanded a lot to Seattle, uh, Portland. We probably see more Northern California than we do Southern California, but we have a healthy number of folks coming from Southern California and um, Arizona and even Texas. And the East Coast, I can't tell you the number of folks I've helped just from the Atlanta area or, you know, the, the Georgia, South Carolina markets. And I think one of the biggest things that really buoys um, Bozeman's foundation, its economy is an incredible university that we have. Montana State is amazing. It has business and economics, engineering, agriculture. It's more of the engineering and, and ag school in the state of Montana. And its president and its community has just built an incredible foundation. And that draws a lot of folks here. And that brings events, cultural events, to a town of Bozeman size that we wouldn't normally have if we didn't have a strong university. So we've had anyone from Mountain John and Def Leppard to uh, Kenny Chesney's coming to visit us this summer. Can you talk to us a little bit about what price points people can expect? That's another great question, Alan. You know, it all has to do with supply and demand. And our demand far exceeds our supply. And right now, depending upon what someone wants to purchase, if maybe they want a couple of acres, and I'm gonna say somewhere between maybe 10 to 20 acres, and they'd love a lovely custom home on it, they may be looking in the high 1 million to three and a half million range. For okay. your, I always used to say our sweet spot in Bozeman was maybe that oh, 350 to 750 range, anywhere from a, a condominium to a, a really nice home downtown. And so our median price right now of homes in Bozeman is probably in the $460,000 range. We've been discovered by a lot of folks. And so that is really impacting our supply and demand. Can you tell us a little bit about the architectural designs? How has that changed through the years? So um, I just sold a home, a historic home in downtown Bozeman that was built in 1912. And our historic area of town, which is just kind of south of our main street, our, our lovely downtown corridor, you're going to find a lot of homes built in the early, some in the late 1800s to early 1900s. We do have sections of downtown that were really built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Surrounding Montana State is a, a very mix of architectural styles from old and historic and Victorian to more of that mid-century modern that we have to offer. And, and some of the homes that were not of quality built and not of historic nature have been either renovated significantly and really taken down to their studs and some have even had to be removed. And so newer homes have been built and you start to see more of that, what I call that mountain modern 
Uh, you'll see a little bit more angles to those homes and slanted roofs and very charming, very, uh, very conscious on the use of space because they are older historic lots downtown. So very conscious about the use of space, both inside and outside. Pollyanna, talk to us about your seasonal activities. So we have an array of winter sports, uh, which includes skiing, snowshoeing, you know, cross-country skiing, downhill skiing. Here in Bozeman, we have uh, Bridger Bowl, which is just, I'm standing here actually looking at it right now, which is maybe 15 minutes here on the ski slopes. And then to the south of us, just about 50 miles, we have Big Sky, which Big Sky is the largest uh, terrain ski resort in the United States. So yes, snowmobiling, uh, ice climbing, ice skating. I'm a, I happen to be a rabid hockey mom. Both my children play hockey and there's figure skating. There's now curling. We have a curling league and Bozeman has wow. the largest adult hockey league in the state. In the summertime, we are, you know, we're a world renowned hotspot for fly fishing. We have three forts to the west of us, which is the confluence of the Gallatin, Madison, and Jefferson Rivers. Hiking, biking, kayaking, canoeing. Um, I mean, the summer here is just exceptional. So let's talk a little bit, Pollyanna, about your appreciation. How has that been year after year with the home values there? Oh, that is that is the never ending question. Our appreciation <laughs> has been, quite frankly, through the roof. Um, prior to COVID, we saw a healthy eight to 10 percent a year. In some of our market sectors right now, we're seeing as high as 21% a year. Pollyanna, what condition may a buyer expect a home to be in when they're looking in Montana? Well, you know, I don't know that it's all that different from your market. Of course, we're in a seller's market. Now, I always prepare my sellers, though, to have that house and that property in as top a shape as possible in order to garnish you know, garner the highest dollar per square foot for that property. So we all, our, our industry as a whole here, we do work really hard to prepare our sellers to put those homes in an, in top condition, just so that they can garner that, that highest dollar. So you're gonna see things, you know, very, typically you're gonna see things very well maintained, uh, staged in some aspects. And, um, you know, they want to put their best foot forward. That's good to hear. And Pollyanna, how easy is it to get in and out of Montana flight wise? So the Bozeman airport is the largest airport in the state of Montana. Uh, I think I looked yesterday and we have approximately 26 direct flights. Um, LA being one of those, San Francisco being one of those cities that we have direct flights to. And just last week, uh, Southwest Airlines um, announced that they're gonna be flying into Bozeman starting in May of this year. So we do have the busiest airport in the state. So that is also allowing people to move here and they can work full time. If they need to travel for work, you know, it's a very easy flight, one flight or two flights to be anywhere in the country. Pollyanna, are there tax savings in Montana? Montana does not have a sales tax. Uh, we do have property tax and we do have income tax, but we do not have sales okay. tax. But one thing that is very important to your viewers is the fact that Montana is a non-disclosure state. We're about one of six states in the U.S. that are non-disclosure states, which means what you pay for your property is not disclosed in any way, shape, or form. That's actually a nice feature, very nice feature to have. Pollyanna, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode, Location Lux. Alan, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to share Montana with everyone, and I look forward to having you personally visit here soon.